Welcome back. As we said in our intro, we are, we are going to tackle a very important topic regarding our laborers, regarding the Egyptian working power. Some of their rights um, are to qualify them more, to let them be la crème de la crème as the French are saying when it comes to the competitiveness of the market, to preserve their rights whether inside or outside the country. What our homework? what we should do. This is going to be our topic with our dear guest live here in the studio, um, Ambassador, um, Minister, sorry, former uh, Commercial Minister, Ayub Mahmoud Ayub. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. Very good morning to you. Good, good morning, Ambassador Ayub. And um, we need to learn more about uh, the government's ambitious plan uh, or project that would be applied with regards to the competitiveness of the labors. Let us begin by defining the word competitiveness mm -hmm. so that the viewers can know what we are speaking about and mm -hmm. then we will come to the plan of the government which is equally important. <coughs> competitiveness is being able to compete in the market. It's, it's simple like that. Mm -hmm. the pro it, it contains it, uh, productivity, working condition, conditions, health conditions, control, and all the procedures which enables me to put in the market a product, whatever the product is, and being able to sell it to the end user. Mm. This is what we call competitiveness. Since for now, for almost two years now, the ILO, International Labor Office in Geneva, has asked the governments of the, 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 of the contracting parties to increase the competitiveness of their labor force. Why we say that? Because the economic returns are very high. When we are, the, we are adding cost to our production, this means that we must have something in return. <coughs> then is the competitiveness or the edge which you have other, uh, over mm -hmm. other competitors. When I say that Egypt is one of 23 countries in the world who are competitive in the international market, this is a message. Mm. To whom? Not only to, to the Egyptians, but also the Arab countries and the other African and Asian countries that we have quali highly qualified labor force which can compete other uh, for uh, labor, uh, 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 labor from other destinations or cheaper labor. This is very important because mm -hmm. at some stage the, 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 the landowner or the uh, employer want the more productive worker <coughs> for the same pay. Mm. This means that if I am not qualified, then I will be kicked out of the market. Mm. When we say that Egypt is one of 23 countries in the world who are competitive in the international market, this encourages also foreign investment to come and invest in Egypt because sure. they know as such that we are competitive as far as our labor force is concerned. It is not only the laws, it is also the human being which is in, in, in yes. consideration in this respect. Mm -hmm. Sir, I meant to what you were saying, sir, of course, but I wanted to focus on a specific point which is vocational training, which is courses, which is uh, vocational education. Because um, I think, in my humble opinion, one of the most important rights of any worker is to boost him, is to qualify him, is to give him the master modern techniques in his speciality. And this is the only way um, uh, which will guarantee that he or she, of course, is going to be part and parcel of the wheel of progress when it comes to the economic reform. How do you see this, sir, and our culture regarding um, Vocational education. Vocational training is the most important asset of any business now. Mm -hmm. Whether in trade, in industry, in agriculture, or any, 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 any job. When we say vocational yeah. training, that is qualifying my labor to be able to go in this project and be productive. But vocational training means also that he is aware of what is around him. Yeah. Not only he is qualified for his work, but he is aware 
he is a part of a, of a whole mechanism in which he must be highly qualified to be in, in on par with other parts of the, the, the this organization. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. Other thing is that when we say vocational training, this means that we need qualified trainers to train the employees or workers or whatever on how to be more competitive. Third thing which is very important, the law governing the, uh, the, the labor market in Egypt. It is a sophisticated law, that is to say that it copes with the actual needs of the labor. When any investor, I'm always looking to the investors in this respect. Mm -hmm. I don't mean only Egyptian investors, but also Arab and foreign investors. When they are sure that we have qualified labor who had enough and uh, superb, if I'll say, vocational training, they are encouraged to come and invest in this country, which is Im important for us. Vocational training means, uh, on the other side, it is value addition. Mm -hmm. Because if he is qualified and had enough vocational training, then he will be able to add value to the project where he is, uh, is working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, sir, um, uh, with reference to uh, what you have just said um, uh, regarding attracting more Arab and foreign investors, uh, I would like to know from you how would applying the project of competitiveness affect the Egyptian economy at large? In many parts of the Egyptian economy, the investors come and see, and this was <coughs> some time ago, that the competitiveness or the uh, uh, quality of the labor is substandard. Mm. When we are giving them now the progression training, and the ILO International Labor Office say that we are qualified, this means it is a big message to the, the, the investor to come and invest or invest again, or rather increase investment in Egypt. Mm. This is one thing. When we say vocational training, this is an investment by itself. Mm. There's cost, of course, I know for that, but it is an investment by itself which increases the productivity of the labor and makes him able to compete with other workers in the same profession or the same industry in, in, the, in other countries. This will reflect on mm -hmm. being able to compete in the international market. My products, will, if I'm highly qualified, the labor are highly qualified, and this productivity is high enough, then the end product, the cost of the end product, will be able to compete in the international market. In many cases, we find that the productivity of labor mm -hmm. is a very big, will I say, a, 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 a very big boost mm. or <coughs> or rather, or uh, the opposite retreat to, yes. to, for the production. Yes. In, in many cases, we find that the cost of the product is, defi is, uh, is defined by the productivity of the labor. Yes. When the cost is higher, then the productivity, this means that the productivity is lower. When the cost is lower, this means that they had enough vocational training, enough laws, enough uh, and suitable working conditions, mm. health conditions, and also the validation of the product is quite enough to compete in the international market. Yes. And this means increasing the, imp the exports, uh, decreasing the imports, and to uh, fulfill all the needs of the local market. Yes. Or in a way... What, what, we, what we are looking for, or I am looking for all the time, was to increase our exports. Okay. When we say increase our exports, this means that, first of all, a part of it is import substitution. Second, using the, the already the established or the, the assets which I have to, in a very good combination or mixed product mix, to be competitive in international market. When we say exports, this means that foreign exchange receipts, this means that uh, lower uh, balance of trade deficit mm -hmm. and lower uh, balance of payment deficit and most importantly encouraging the other investors to come to Egypt to consider it a hub for investment not only for the Egyptian market but also for the African, Arab and also the European market. We have seen this in many instances. We have exported at some stage, I am familiar with that, fridges, refrigerators to China. 
We are astonished. Yes, <coughs> China took our refrigerators and it was put in the market in uh, Yemen where they were implementing some projects. Mm -hmm. So they found that they can, they can import or buy Egyptian products for other markets which they are working in. There are many uh, foreign investors now, Russian, Chinese and else and Arab in the Gulf of Suez area uh, or uh, the Suez economic zone. Mm -hmm. This is a part of the empowerment of our labor to be competitive in the local market. If we are not competitive in the local market, I will not be able to compete in the international market. Mm -hmm. I am, when I am competitive here, I had enough uh, training. And the uh, sophisticated training, I mean, this means that I will satisfy the need of the employer or rather the investor. Yes. Um, sir, um, in your own opinion, um, how far did uh, this uh, uh, project succeed in governorates of Alexandria, Port Said and Sharqaliya? How did these governorates benefit uh, from the competitiveness project? I am pleased to say that it was successful in the first stage. We want, when it is successful, I need some kind of certification. It came from the ILO. Mm -hmm. This means that I can move to other parts of the, of the country. Mm -hmm. to Aswan or Fayyum or Suhag or whatever to have the same experiment increasing productivity of labor and having enough uh, value addition from each labor in his own industry. Mm -hmm. This is very important as far as the cost is concerned and we are always looking to the cost or the final cost of the product to be able to compete locally and the international, in the international market. Mm -hmm. yes. And sir, um, President Abdel Fattah Sisi, whenever he is in any of uh, his, uh, his marathon tours um, um, all over the world, he is all the time uh, speaking about investment, about our economic reform, about the chances of investment here in Egypt. And I think what we, what we are talking about is a main source of attraction, especially for the heavy industries, for example, about the auto uh, industries, about the steel industries, uh, about, uh, I'm not going to say relatively new industries introduced to Egypt, but it's, um, it's getting back to, to such industries. How do you see, sir, uh, this balance between attracting the investments and having what we are talking about as a source of more attraction, especially in the industries I mentioned, the heavy ones, because um, those heavy industries are really uh, uh, should or should be, to be accurate, responsible for uh, many job opportunities for, I would say, hundreds of thousands of workers. We are lucky that our president is promoting the Egyptian economy and investing in Egypt overseas when he's, whenever he is going and in the with many heads of states. That is a very good thing, which we should reflect on the industry in Egypt. When you are speaking about the industries, whether heavy industry or small scale industries or whatever, we need to convince the labor themselves, the worker themselves, that is for their own benefit to raise their productivity. Mm -hmm. This means for me that when I am cutting the cost in all the components of the production process, this will give, give me at the end lower cost product which will be competitive in our market and in the international market. Mm -hmm. When we are speaking about heavy industry, mm -hmm. it, the, the training is a must. It is one of the assets mm -hmm. of any heavy industry. We have seen this in the iron and steel company in Egypt and other in the petrol, uh, petrol, uh, yes. uh, 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 petrol refineries, stations, refineries. Yeah. and in these cases we found that the labor, when they are well trained, they will be able to cope with the needs, especially when we are seeing every day we have new technology coming to Egypt and coming to other uh, suppliers, of, of, of course. Mm -hmm. So we have to cope with the needs of the market as far as sophistication and modernization is concerned, not only in the heavy, in the, uh, heavy industry, but also in medium, medium industry and small scale industries. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we need a short break, short break, uh, Mr. Ambassador, and we'll be right back uh, to resume this segment of The Breakfast Show.
دقيقة واحدة تفرق كتير والوقت دايما تحدي في زمن قياسي مصر طورت منظومة النقل وأضافت وجددت 97 محطة سكة حديد وطورت 335 مزلقان 212 عربة قطار تم شرائها وتم التعاقد على 1300 عربة قطار لدعم منظومة السكة الحديد وتم توريد 24 قطار جديد مكيف لمترو الأنفاق وفي مجال النقل البحري تم تطوير موانئ الغردقة وسفاجة لتتسع ل 2 مليون راكب سنويا وتطوير ميناء نويبع وتم تعميق المجرى الملاحي لموانئ دمياط والإسكندرية لاستيعاب كل السفن العملاقة مصر دايما على الطريق الصحيح وهتوصل بسرعة بلغ حجم استثمارات المشروعات خلال ست سنوات حتى يونيو 2020 253 مليار جنيه مصر التحدي والإنجاز Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are discussing uh, the new uh, competitiveness uh, project applied by the Egyptian government. And uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, we were talking about the importance of training laborers, but also I believe that this goes hand in hand with uh, raising the awareness with regards to laborers' rights. And here the target would be the laborers themselves and the employers, and of course the, the, the public. Um, how do you see the importance of awareness and laborers' rights? When the labor is aware that he is getting his full rights in his job, then he will be more productive, generally mm. speaking. But when we come to Egyptian market act itself, we find that we have a new labor law. This enables the, entitles the labor to get enough or the commensurate uh, pay, payment, that's one thing, and at the same time guarantees the manufacturer or the, let's say, the employer to have return on his investment in this, in this project by, by, per se, as it is. In many cases you find that the labor, when they are not fully aware mm -hmm. of their obligation, not only the rights, mm -hmm. it is a balanced way. We can, we all support the, the, that the labor will get the rights, full rights, okay. But in return, mm -hmm. and in, in, this, in, in, in the same time, the labor should be aware, not only of his rights, but also of his duties and the responsibilities exactly. as far as his project is sure. concerned. Mm -hmm. In this way, when, I have seen that in China, every labor is keen to be productive. Himself, as a person, is keen to be productive to this unit or to this factory in this way they are going rising up together to be able to compete in the international market and we see this the chinese products are uh, coming all over the world you have seen it because they are competitive why they are competitive because the labor is competitive and the labor is aware of also of his national duty mm -hmm. that we need to raise our standard and our uh, uh, efficiency as far as production is concerned and cut the cost as far as we can. 
Well, um, uh, Mr. Ayoub, Mahmoud Ayoub, former, uh, commercial, form, uh, former commercial minister, thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Thank you very much for your input and have a very good day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a short break with Dina Yunus and we'll be right back.